This is my productive iPad home screen setup. I know many people who end up having their iPad lying around, not making the full use of it. By the end of this video, you'll hopefully be inspired to create your own productive iPad setup and maybe discover some new ways to use your iPad. First, let's look at the home screen. It's made out of mostly widgets with apps just on my dock. If I want to access any other apps, I do so by using the app library by swiping to the right. I have three calendar-based widgets, a date widget, a weekly calendar widget, and an agenda widget. The date widget tells me today's date quickly, and the weekly calendar widget allows me to assign the right date when setting a new deadline or finding a time with someone. And lastly, the agenda widget tells me what I plan to do now and what's coming up next. Besides these calendar-based widgets, I have a daily progress widget to quickly let me know the percentage of my day that has passed. Time is our most valuable asset, and these widgets serve as a reminder to use it wisely and not waste it away. The remaining widgets on my home screen are Notion widgets. I think that pretty much explains how much I use Notion. First, we have a medium-sized Notion widget that displays a list of my favorite pages in Notion. I use this to easily pin pages to the top for quick access. And you can see at the top that I have my digital minimalist playbook. I've been working on this mini guide that I have finally published to help you transform your phone from a distraction into a tool that actually supports you. And if this interests you, check out the link below. Let's get back to the video. To add or remove any pages from favorites, you can just click on the three dots in the top right corner of any Notion page and you should see the option to add or remove the page from favorites. Next, the first two small Notion widgets I have provide direct access to my tasks and notes page, which are my top use cases of Notion. In the next column, I have six small Notion widgets that are more for my personal life, like a reading list. This is where I can easily add a book to my to-read list or add a new favorite quote from a book. The next widget is a movie list widget. I'm not really a movie person, but it's helpful to keep track of the recommendations I see so I have a good list to choose from when I want to treat myself to a movie. I don't want to make this a Notion video, but if you want to learn more about these pages, let me know in the comments. Next two widgets are for fitness, my training schedule and running tracker, and the last two widgets are for basic habit tracking and journaling. Oh yeah, Notion added charts recently, so that's pretty fun to see as you check off your habits in Notion. And on the other hand, I'm still trying to build a habit of journaling, but when I do, I can just create a new page from this calendar view and start jotting down my thoughts. So moving on to the apps that I have on my dock. From left to right, we have Notion, Arc, ChatGPT, Endel, MyMy, Photos, and Freeform. But today, we'll focus on a few key apps that are used more often on my iPad. First, being Notion. One of my frequent use cases of Notion on iPad is for journaling. I try to leave my computer for only work tasks, so being able to type on my iPad with my magic keyboard is perfect, and I can easily pop open my iPad during my morning coffee to do it. Another way to think about it is that the iPad acts as a hybrid device, so it's in between official work like managing projects and personal activities like messaging. I also do some of my content scripting on my iPad. When it comes to creative tasks, I find it's always good to switch things up, like working in a different environment, such as moving from my computer to my iPad. And this especially helps to get my ideas flowing again when I get stuck. I also use my iPad as a reference device for my notes and script when I'm filming. So I accept today when I'm actually using my laptop for reference. Lastly, as I do most often across my devices, is to capture open loops. That means not leaving things that I need to get done hanging and capturing down into my second brain. My next go-to iPad app is Endel. It's a premium app, but it's an app that really vibes with me because of its slick and simple interface. It provides sign-based soundscapes to help you focus, which is what I mainly use it for. Though they also offer soundscapes to help you relax and also for sleeping. They also have a really well-built Pomodoro timer feature. You can adjust the duration of your focus time for your short break and for your long break. You can also select the number of rounds you're going for based on your schedule. And on top of that, they actually recently added an app blocking feature which you can toggle on to block distracting apps during your focus sessions. Clicking on start brings you to a beautiful screen to put on display at your desk with the soundscapes playing in the background. There's also a neat indicator of the current round you're in during your focus sessions. And that's pretty much how I use Endel to prime myself for deep work. The next app I'm using is called MyMy. If Notion is my second brain, MyMy is like my creative brain. It's an app for collecting beautiful designs and inspirations in one place. You can scroll through everything you have saved in an easy to view layout, unlike the page by page experience in Notion. Imagine you're scrolling on Twitter and you come across a great looking photo that inspires you. You can open up the image and go to where you normally share posts, but instead click on the MyMy app. When you return to my mind, you will see the image added to your inspiration library. A fun feature that I enjoy is the auto-generated TLDR summary of each saved image. Let's do another quick demo. Say I'm browsing the web and find a design I like. I can hold down on the image and use the share feature and click on the MyMind app to save it. Again, we get the handy TLDR summary for this newly saved inspiration. That's how you can create endless inspiration for yourself so you always have something to reference or something that inspires you. The last app that I frequent on my iPad is Freeform. It's a free default iPad app for taking handwritten notes. But what I often do is sketching out my ideas, something I really wish we could do in Notion. One example is sketching out thumbnail ideas for my YouTube videos like this one. Once I'm sketching or drawing, I simply take a screenshot on my iPad and upload it to the respective content page or the project page in Notion. Another way I use Freeform is to create a rough design for my new websites I'm building. Here, I'm doing a rough design of my new project, 
aside for finding Notion inspiration and setup ideas. So think of it as Pinterest, but exclusively for Notion users. As I focus more on content creation, I realize how much I miss building and experimenting different use cases and setups in Notion. So this is the platform that I want to share those ideas with you. The main concept is that this will become like a go-to place for you to find inspiration you need for using Notion for different use cases, whether it's for studying, workout tracking, or managing your site business, or figuring out just what's possible in Notion. If you're interested in checking this out, I'll leave the link below as well. So back to Freeform, I think it is really what makes the iPad stand out, say from a phone or a laptop. It's like a drawing pad but with endless canvas. This brings me to today's sponsor, Paperlite, who makes paper fill screen protector. Putting the Paperlite on my iPad, the first side benefit I notice is the less reflective screen. But really, the main benefit is that the Paperlite screen protector prevents oversliding and allows for more accuracy when using the Apple Pencil. For me, just the feeling of writing on an iPad like it were on paper is enough because it makes sketching ideas and taking notes feel more natural and enjoyable. The pencil grip and the cleaning kit that comes with their note taker collection are also pretty handy. Besides the ergonomic benefits, the pencil grip also makes taking notes on the iPad feel a bit more professional. And who does not want a clean setup? The cleaning kit is portable and does its job. I've included a link to the note taker collection if you'd like to upgrade your iPad experience with Paperlike. And thank you again to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. And that pretty much sums up frequent apps that I use on my iPad. So I'd like to dedicate this last segment of the video to the smaller use cases for my iPad. Since I keep most of my work on my computer, it just makes sense to use the iPad which has a larger screen than my phone for entertainment like watching YouTube videos. I also use the iPad as a music player similar to how I use Endel, leaving it on my secondary desk to set the mood but this time for chilling and relaxing. Lastly, I spent a dollar on this app which you might recognize as a popular free screensaver for Mac. I just thought this app could add a nice touch to my desk even when I'm not actively using my iPad. The last thing that I do on my iPad is like googling and researching. This could be for projects that I'm working on or sometimes just for personal interests like travel planning. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions about my iPad setup, leave them down in the comments and I will try to answer them in the next iPad video. If you want to learn how to set up these custom minimal widgets and app icons that I have on my iPad home screen, so you can actually check out the iPhone setup guide video that I did a while ago and don't worry the steps are exactly the same on the iPad. Lastly, you can find all the other links to the wallpapers, icons and templates that I'm using down in the description below. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.